thank you for having me. Um, as I said, this presentation started around a beer with a colleague from the CSIRT. It sort of made me think, well, why is this person saying that CTA is dead? And one of the issues that sort of popped up is CSIRTs do CTI on a regular basis. And I want to discuss a bit how we as, or as people from CTI teams can better support CSIRTs. So my name's David. Um, my role is a th senior threat analyst at InfoGuard. I'll get to that in a second. And my background is from social sciences. So what I want to talk about is what can be a main CTI team objective, um, identifying the incident handling pace, and how and when certain CTI teams exchange during incidents. I think this is an important aspect of our collaboration with these teams. So who is InfoGuard? InfoGuard is one of the largest MSSPs in Switzerland. We have a, a European presence. We defend about 150 organizations with SOC services, and we monitor something over 100,000 endpoints. One big thing that we also have is our commercial C-cert. So they also do level three for the SOC, but they are also called upon um, by third-party clients. And this is an important aspect. So I borrowed this slide from them. Um, this is the number of cases they've dealt with this year. Um, you don't see it's a bit under the red arrow, sorry for that, but it's about 206 cases and there was status in September. What I want to say here is th the context from which I'm speaking about is important. So I'm talking about an MSSP and we're talking about a seasoned CSIRT. So there are 10 individuals working that CSIRT team and they've been dealing with about a bit under one case per week since the beginning of the week. So these people are drilled, are doing this on a daily basis very um, and very well. So on the one hand, we have this IR cycle. Um, I'm not going to get in, I'm more from the CTI team, but we have incident response cycle, um, which came from the NIST, it's 2012, so it's a bit over 10 years. I just went through the document, there's no uh, mention of intelligence whatsoever. Um, this is not a critique, it just shows how CTI is actually a very uh, nascent um, discipline, if I may put it that way. We also have uh, the SUNS incident response cycle, um, I won't get too much into it. More or less the, def the, the, the change or the difference between the two is that SUNS uh, breaks down the containment, eradication, recovery aspects of it. So this is something that the, the incident response teams do on a daily basis. Um, but where does CTI fit in? Is CTI dead? Can we not help there? And this brought me into pondering questions. So, on the other hand, we have this, so we have this IR C-cert industry that is very established, is coming forward. On the other hand, we have a trendy CTI. The CTI Summit, I think, is the second one. And Haklu is what, number 17? So we see already there the difference. So it's a bit of a buzzword. We don't know exactly what it contains. It sounds cool. Everybody wants to have their own team. It's great marketing. We publish reports. People see it. Hey, we're doing really cool research. Um, it's an additional service to sell. That's also pretty cool. Make money. Um, so let's create a team. But where do we start? Where does the CTI team start? Do you have a C-shirt that is doing CTI? You may have a SOC looking at the alerts. Where, alerts. where do we fit in? So where to start? And trying to look for a sort of a common definition. Many people talk about ways to do CTI. And, but I think maybe we should think about what the fundamental goal is of threat intelligence. And I found this definition by Joe Slovic that he published while he was at Dregos, and I think it's a good starting point. What we want to do as CTI, as, as CTI analysts and in general in this industry, um, is to prepare for or defend against an event or an attack which has not already occurred. So you might say, well, why does this play with the C-cert? First of all, well, it's extremely important for an MSSP. We have 150 organizations that trust us with the security of their network. So if I see attacks happening, I want to be able to protect the herd that I'm entrusted with. To do that, working with the CSIRT is quite interesting because CSIRT, they see the successful attacks. An attack is going on, has triggered a high severity alert, or the attack has already pulled through. So it's gone through the defensive mechanisms that an organization has put into place. So this is extremely um, valuable information for a CTI team, because you can dig in, make sense, and understand what is currently going on. 
One of the pressures that we have as a CTI team is we want actionable intelligence quite quickly. If something is coming out and hit one company, let's say in the banking industry, quite quickly there's a possibility that it would go into other banks. So we want to be able to share that information as fast as possible. But the CSIRT has other priorities. So this is where the pacing between CSIRT and TCTI teams is a challenge when we work together. So again, we're talking about an MSSP. It can also be an, a national CSIRT, um, but somebody going to external networks, they don't know what they're uh, going to face, and a CTI team that is established and that is separate, not totally integrated into the CSIRT. So before I continue, I want to talk about firefighters. Um, we have two um, of the CSIRT members. They're also volunteer firefighters, so we talk about their cool action stuff, and it makes actually quite good analogy when we talk about CSIRT cases. So somebody finds a fire, there's a, maybe a fire going on, um, calls up the firefighting um, emergency call, says, oh, my toaster is frying, it's uh, started catching fire, I'm at Avenue de, de la Gare 28, uh, third apartment, second floor. Um, that's really good information, actually, when somebody calls up and says that. And the firefighters put on their equipment, start moving, um, are approaching the scene of the fire or the incident, and they're going to do two, two things when they arrive. It's not just hosing that toaster way out of the window. Before you arrive, when you arrive, you have to see, has the fire changed? What is the status of the fire? Are there other people? Could the fire catch on into other apartments? So what you want to do at that moment is contain the fire and sort of secure where you're working at. And then you can get to fire fighting. So that's not much different to um, C-certs and firefighting. You get a C-cert notification, it can be very good. It can be, well, we have a trigger on this server, there's an, uh, a process was injected um, coming from that IP. It can be, we got an alert, we checked our AV um, logs, and we have some alerts, we don't know what it is. So it depends a bit on the information. Then we have the engage in preparation, getting on the end, preparing to deploy on the network. Once they're on the network, well, one of the things we tend to forget is we want to do damage control. We want to limit the possibilities of the attacker moving around, and then we can start tracking him down on the network. Finally, in some cases, we also have incident hypothesis building. What I want to talk about, why I'm talking about this in the firefighting um, comparison is there's an incident momentum. The CSIRT, or my colleagues, talking with them, there are moments where they're cool and chill, we can talk about movies, but then an incident comes in, they're like, oh yes, we've got some work coming in, and there's an adrenaline. So what did the client customer send? How what is the information coming in? And they prepare, and we see that there's an excitement going on. And when they, once they arrive on the scene of the, of the incident, of the crime I was going to say, which will bring us to the next point, um, they're fully concentrated and they're in a full task mode. And this can be the, the challenge with us as CTI specialists or analysts trying to get that information out where, hey, give us the information, but they're at somewhere else. One main difference that we have with firefighting and um, CSIRTs is CSIRTs have a, an active threat actor with malicious intent against the customer. Um, so let me just do a Klausowitzian interlude, um, and this is really for um, external CSIRTs, but both the threat actor um, and the external CSIRT are meeting on an unknown battlefield. The threat actor has had time to position themselves on the network, the battlefield, if you want to put it that way. The CSIRT arrives on the battlefield and has to do two or three things quite rapidly. It has to assess the situation, meaning where is the opponent, in which servers, in which endpoints, where is he dig digged in, and what is the objective of that attacker? Is it just a business email compromise? Maybe not that interesting. Are they doing a ransomware? Or have they been in the network at time? So at that moment, the CSIRT has full action in trying to limit the damage that is going on there. And the third step is the CSIRT has to be quicker than the attacker. Um, in that sense, it has to take the initiative back. To put it in the OODA loops, uh, the Observe, Orient, Decide Act, the CSIRT comes out from not knowing the battlefield to a situation where there's an incident, there's a fire going on, you have to do damage control, and you have to take back control of that network. And this is a sprint. This is a moment where the CSIRT typically is very, very concentrated and is not very responsive. So getting back to this sort of distinction, this is where we have the OODA loop sprint. Um, so again, going with this curve, 
um, we see on the side over there. Um, this is a moment where excitement and focus is at the maximum for the CTI team, uh, for the CSER team, sorry. And the question is, what's the CTI team doing at that moment? Um, we're a small uh, CTI team at an MSSP. So what we're trying to do is acquiring trustworthy sources, uh, vouching for them, or qualifying the data that we're receiving, analyzing reports that we see are about. We try to assess the threat landscape, or we assess the threat landscape, particularly for those, for the customers that we have, or the industry sectors that we protect. And we also coordinate information exchange. But we also want to know which attacks were successful. So we started following the CSERT in incidents. So here we have two, um, and this is generaliz generalizations. So there are exceptions, but what we have in orange is the CTI team momentum. It's at the beginning of the case, well, we might have some information from the customer, but not that much. And when the, C the CSERT gets into the network and starts going out and finding stuff, it gets interesting for the CTI team to have access to that data and start tagging along and seeing if we can get a big picture. But that sort of, um, I, I, it also creates sort of three distinct times at which time we can maybe give some input to the CSERT. One of the big, um, uh, one of the critiques is CTI teams just take the information, don't give anything back. But I think we have to find a way of collaborating. So when and what and how can we collaborate? So at the beginning of the engagement, and excitement is going up, we can have, we can try to give them information that we already have to maybe explain the battlefield, what is a threat landscape, what are the current, uh, current vulnerabilities that are being exploited. These are information and we can give them in a written form, not calling them up because they're busy getting on the fire truck. We have another point in time where they're hunting, assessing, and interdiction. We can help them by locating and understanding the threat actor. If we're tagging along, seeing what's going on, we can again give them signals, um, signatures, or what is the possibility? That, well, it looks like they're using a Cisco VPN. The Cisco VPN is, has been exploited for the last week by this attacker. So this might be a way the client has one. Oh, that's maybe interesting for them. So it helps them sort of go on onto their tracks. The third point in time is the case summary. I, th I believe that we can give the, the C-cert when, when we follow along the incident and we're documenting it on our side. We might not have the same granularity, but we're trying to understand what's going on so we have an external, external view. And we can share that and create sort of an enemy's gates is down effect. The idea here, it comes from Ender's Game, a very good science fiction novel if you want to read. But the idea is, um, to, th to maybe think about the enemy and the battlefield in a different way than they've been going through. They're in, a, they're in an adrenaline rush. And so maybe after six, seven, eight hours, they're too focused. So maybe the information that we can give there and discuss with them with our case summary can help open. And this is a very new, t discussing with the CSERT colleagues, they were saying, well, I really like it when you call me up at sort of when I've contained the incidents, I've set off my queries, I sort of understanding what's going on. And I'm now in a more relaxed mode. I'm going home and I'm thinking in the car, did I do the right queries? Did I do the right checks? And they're making the story of the incident. And if we can, as a CTI team, give them the information there to enrich that thought process, maybe think about other possibilities, what it might also be going on. Is there possibly another threat actor that has also been using that vulnerability? And that will help the C-shirt lead think about the case and maybe also enrich the tracking process on the next day. So as a sort of, um, how do you say, exceptionally, the, 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 the purple, below the purple line, the incident hypothesis building in a seasoned C-cert is less often. They have lots of uh, ransomware cases where it becomes the pattern is always the same. This becomes the incident hypothesis, the sweet spot for discussing is often in cases that take longer. Um, typically, um, there are multiple threat actors. It may be a customer that is in a strategic um, industry. These are places and cases where it becomes much more interesting to have this discussion. So it's not always the case that we can support with that. So if we look at it, and it's very schematic, um, we have the, the, sorry about the colors, the, the, the big sino, uh, sinusoidal curve with the high peaks and the high lows is the C-shirt between 
incidents. So one incident, we have the going on, getting control of the battlefield, and then going down, doing last tracking, finding the last traces, uh, whatever backdoor is still uh, lurking around, and then writing the report. And then they have a sort of an R&R, &R, a resting period, and the next case comes in. Not to say that they just rest at the low part and that they're not doing any activity, but it's the intensity of the activity that they're doing. The C-cert, which is a bit a lower and less um, uh, extreme case, is a more service sort of, we're always doing the same thing. We're trying to get information, we're analyzing that, and we're creating a threat landscape to sort of support our customers, be it the C-cert, the SOC, or even our um, individual organizations that entrust us with their, their security. So the C-cert has a more sprint and stop pace. The CTI team has a less intense variation. We can take it, coming back to the Klausowitzian sort of uh, way of looking at things, the C-cert is battle concentrated. They have different incidents, and when they arrive at an incident, they have to take back the initiative, evict the attacker if they can, limit the damage, and then next shot. The CTI more is more threat landscape, and it, if we want to say it in other terms, is it more the general war that we're uh, waging against cyber criminals. Is we have to be um, understanding what is connected between the different attacks, what is might be coming, what are the different modes of attacks. So it's a different rhythm that we're following there. Another way of seeing it is, again, at the beginning of the case, we can give the threat landscape, maybe the last vulnerabilities, and it's when we follow and we tag along with the C-cert that we can get more information and we can start summarizing, thinking about the case, and then being able to um, share that with the C-cert team. So I believe that the CTI team is an asset um, for the C-cert. In the short run, in early cases, or in rather short cases, repetitive, we can give early warning, there's a new vulnerability, we've seen that it's being exploited, we've received that information from our national authority under this or that um, data handling structure. Um, it might come with early detections and signatures, so helping once they're on the network find what is actually going on, coming back to the example with the Cisco VPN, and also giving this second opinion, trying to provoke the enemy gates is down effect. In the long run, and this is more on the, the longer, um, uh, longer cases or more complex cases, is also the geopolitical and economic aspects of what is going on. We can also provide that threats landscape because this is something that we're doing in the long run. And also, we might understand that there's a need for information coordination. The CSIRT, they want to evict the attacker. We might think, well, this is actually a very peculiar attacker in that in that industry. It might be interesting to share that knowledge with the National Sea Cert because we want to defend anybody in that sector. So, having said that, um, there are also some possible points of friction. Um, as a CTI analyst, I make assessments, I make errors, and I need to be able to do that. That is my job. As Sea Cert, when they're in the heat of the moment, they should avoid making any errors. So, this is again maybe do the sharing and discussion about hypotheses when the stress is a bit lower. And also, we're, we tend to be nagging the C-cert. Hey, can you ask the customer, can we please share this? Under which, ask him which classification. Can we share it anonymously or can we say the name? With whom? And so we're asking all these questions, which is an additional load for the C-cert, and we have to see when is the optimal moment to do that. And then we have also a CTI team challenges if we're tagging along with the C-cert. Um, so it's not the only job that we're doing, but if we're following the C-cert, the, the pace and the context shifting um, can be quite um, um, tolling in that sense. If you have a, we have a, if you have a large uh, C-cert team dealing with four or five incidents, and you're a CTI analyst trying to follow four or five incidents at the same time, you will start messing up things. W was it the IOC? Was it the Cisco? Or was it the other one? Nothing against Cisco. It's just came out last week, so that's why. Um, but the context shifting is tolling on the intellectual capacity to do analysis. So this also brings up the other idea, or another challenge, is the resources that you need. If you're a one-person team trying to follow a 10-person team, you're going to get an analyst fatigue quite quickly. So these are just some of the challenges. They're not all. I try to keep it in 20 minutes. I'm hoping to also to provoke a discussion. So in conclusion, I believe the CTI team is an invaluable asset for the CSIRT. 
and I hope I have convinced my colleague. And as a, for an MSSP, if we want to protect a herd to understand what is going on, getting that information from su successful attacks to those who have not been hit yet, we also need to find a way to faci facilitate continuous information flow between the teams, um, that they're not living in different closings or different um, compartments and not exchanging. We need to get that lively, and I think thinking about pace and tagging along with CSERT events and attacks can be a way of doing that. And if we do that, knowing when and how a CTI team can support a CSERT um, and, at what, well, um, and how, I think it's a first step in that direction, but this is open for discussion. And I'm happy to have any questions, comments, and discussions started. Thank you for your time and attention. Yes. Um, do, do you want a micro, or should I just repeat the question? Oh, oh do you see the... Uh mixed between CSIR team that have the CTI team within their CSIR team compared to where it's completely separated. What is the advantage, disadvantage of the both, both use case? I've seen both and I was just wondering which one is, I would say, more adequate or if you have any insight on that, it's so, interesting. So I think by being embedded, um, you, you already have, you break down a, a possible compartmentalization or because you're in the same team, you'll have exchange, you'll be at the same team events, you'll be discussing together. So you create a team spirit that might be stronger. Um, whereas if the CTI team is totally um, separate and even further, it could be in a different division of our business unit, then you start closing off and then the efforts to create the interaction becomes more, not more difficult, but more challenging. You have to invest more time and resources into creating this dynamic. But just my thoughts on that. So first of all, thank you for your talk because I can really relate to this even though I'm not working for MSSP but um, working in CTI and having worked in uh, yeah incident response. And uh, I would like to know from you, um, I completely agree with th that once everything has cooled down, then now is the time to talk and make hypotheses and so on. But uh, how do you deal with the, the phases before you said you giving written information? Do you just send it to them and then wait? Or how do you deal with this? Because it's always for me like a high pressure situation because I send them very valuable information from a CTI team. And I get no response at all. I don't know if they read it. And then most of the time they say, sorry, I did never read your information. And thank you anyway. How do you deal with this? So I, I try to make it this I think there are two points there. Um, the first point is we need to have open channels of communication. If you're tagging along with the C-shirt, you want to have access to full information. You want to have access to the communications with the customer. You want to, have commu you want to see what is going on inside the C-shirt teams when they discover different elements. Um, so that is one factor. You should have an open channel where everything is sort of poured in. Um, then on the second, um, so yes, even giving written statements at one point in time when they're really at that moment deploying, seeing their forensic agents coming in, the first requests coming in, that's in general sort of a bad timing unless you have very specific information about the queries they're sending off. Um, so it, it, it's very, uh, how do you say, there's no magic solution. Um, I also have things that I send them off and never comes back. Um, but in other cases, if it's, if it's nicely done, not a report, not the full report, but hey, you should look for this segment, maybe there's a TTP or MITRE TTP or um, an IOC in there, that they will look at if it's pertinent for their case. And I think this is something we have to live with. If people are in a full stress mode, um, they're not going to say, hey, thanks, David, that was really cool. Um, maybe in the end, when we have, if we have time, to do an after action report or a discussion, maybe around a drink at a team event, then we can have that discussion. But I think it's also very context based and I think there's no magical solution, but I think it's better to have written succinctly, 
what you think is specific for their case and help them support or support that taking back the initiative on the battlefield. Thank you for your question. Okay, if there's no more questions, we thank you very much. Thank you.